All right, back again to the Case Zero walkthrough for Armageddon-Gaming.com. First off, we're just going to go this way. We're going to see our second survivor, but we're not going to save him just yet. We don't save him for a while. He's going to actually help us find other survivors. His name is Bob. He's going to be on top of this uh, building right here. You get up, just jump on top of this uh, dumpster. Jump across this HVAC unit, I guess. Onto the roof. Talking to a bit. He's gonna say he's got like he sees people in the bar. Just keep talking and make sure you have everything. You listen to everything he says. He's gonna give you a case to go find. But before we do that, we're gonna go over here, which is uh, one of the more tricky places to get to. This this is the easiest way I found those jumping across that hole, kill these few zombies. I'm going to go into this far room over here. It's actually going to be a cop with a pistol, so you grab the pistol if you want. And there's going to be a set of keys right here. They're the shed keys. Uh, we're going to hold on to those as well. Come back for it later. We're going to jump down here, across this metal bridge. On this lip. Right where this propane tank is fall down. And then that ledge right there, you can actually climb up it. So just jump. Chuck will pull himself up. And then go through this hatch right here. We are now inside the hunting store. And it's going to have two assault rifles. And it's got two shotguns. Which are going to be good for the boss at the end of the, this game. It's going to have swords and crossbows. So you open that door up. This is going to be important. We're going to come back to this room quite a few times to get a few things. So anyway, back to the two survivors we need to get. They're going to be in this bar over here. There'll be a few zombies guarding it, so beat them up. It's going to be Jenna, uh, Gemini and Faustin. Fausto, whatever his name is, I don't remember. And we're going to talk to her, and she's going to join us pretty quickly. And this other dude is drunk, and he wants more beer, so... Don't pick up a chair. Grab a beer. Talk to him a bit. Hand over the beer, and he's gonna want another beer. So we're gonna go grab another beer. Give him a second one. And my weapon. It's gonna vomit. It's lovely. Talk to him again. And now they're both following you. So just make sure there's a fairly clear path. It's not too overrun, but survivors in this game they work better than like at least the falling physics work better than the way they did in uh First Dead Rising. And as long as you keep moving, they're going to keep moving. I I get a little bogged down here. It's an example of how not to do it because they start getting bogged down and they start getting hit. So you you really just want to keep moving, not getting grabbed by zombies like me. You just keep hustling, they're going to keep hustling. You don't have to like continuously yell for them like you did in the first game. And this idiot gets caught. So I had to hit him over the back of the head. Keep moving again, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And get back to the hideout. Safe house, whatever. You will save them. And doing this, when you save the two, is going to get, uh, the girl's going to pay you $15,000. And now what we're going to do, you're going to run to the quarantine zone, and you're going to go to that yellow car, and you're going to pick up the gems that are right outside that door. I hope I didn't say that too late. So just back it up and uh, look at the video. We're going to grab the gems right there. It is going to take a slot in our, uh, our inventory. With that, we are going to go into the shed right here as well, which is where the shed key is used and where we find the bike forks. So this video is a little compact. I'm, I'm trying to hit multiple things in, in just one run out here for the sake of the video and for the sake of save, saving game time. So we got our gems, and we also got the bike forks. 
which will be our second piece. So we're going to hustle this back to our hideout again. And when we get the jewels back to our safe house, we're going to give them to Gemini. And she's going to give us another $15,000, and we're going to have $30,000 at that point. So that's going to be really useful. Feel free to buy the uh, the motorcycle wheel if you haven't done so yet, because this will give you enough money for that. But absolutely make sure you save $25,000. That's very, very important that you do that. But you, you'll have enough to buy the wheel and save $25,000 as well. So anyway, we got a second part, bike forks, from the shed. We're going to put it back. I'm going to grab another weapon since I'm here. And we're going to see Gemini's over here to the left. And she's going to be crying about her lost jewels. And hey, guess what? We already got them. We didn't even have to talk to her because we already knew where to go. She's going to be like, blah, blah, blah. You got my jewels. Give them to her and you'll get another $15,000 and you'll have $30,000. Let's come back to the next video.